and let us all that we can to build a better future. Uh, Daniel, what's the final story for the people? Uh, what is uh, going on? Okay, so we have a really good, uplifting story that I wanted to bring up to round out the show. I'm just kidding. No, it's it's bad. It's maybe one of the worst so far. So this actually goes ironically to a you know a topic we were talking about a couple of weeks ago about Social Security and Medicare and how it actually is uh, is a lot of reasons that statistically a lot of people that get it don't want Medicare because it's a big um, kick the ladder down behind sort of mentality that's going on. But uh, and you know I was mentioning that. Hey, wouldn't it, you know, maybe if that wasn't the case, they would change their mind. Well, I'm not sure it matters or not, but a bad thing is happening. Social Security has uh, decided that they might just kick off half a million people during a pandemic, mainly people that are severely disabled with no other choice to work because they're severely disabled. What could go wrong? Well, you could have 500,000 less people in the country. So over the weekend, the Social Security Administration sent the Trump administration's Office of Management and Budget a proposal that if similar to a leaked version a version leaked earlier this year would bar Social Security benefits from hundreds of thousands of Americans. The document that leaked suggests that the proposal could ultimately prevent as much as half a million Americans from receiving benefits. I mean, what better time to cut people out of benefits than right now when they can't do anything and no one has money to help them out? Wonderful. The SSA's proposal, which as described in press, rele- uh, press reports, would make it harder for older workers to, who, to receive Social Security disability insurance benefits by law, not regulation. The SSA is required to con- consider age, education, and work experience when determining whether a person uh, meets the statutory definition of disability. That is reflecting congressional intent. The current rules acknowledge that older workers, for example, workers in their 50s, will have more difficulty in adjusting to occupational requirements in the national economy following the onset of a serious disability. SSA's proposed new regulation would likely undo these rules to a large extent, making it harder for older workers to qualify. So that's sort of bad on both ends, because right now, if you're in that 50 age, well, you're in that kind of that gate where if you're hit by COVID, you can get those really terrible lifelong side effects. So it's like, well, we got to get those other people. It's not just a 50. We got to wipe out all these other generation people. Wonderful. I expect the SSA uh, to use a lot of misdirection and fiction, this is quoting the article, to sell this proposal. The effect will likely be centered on the buzzword, I love the buzzword, modernization. The agency will suggest that the modern economy provides many jobs that even displaced and disabled older workers can do, like I'm sure computer work. Wonderful. The widespread, I mean, it's like, it just goes back to that $600 a week. It's like, how dare these, like, really old people who have been injured on the job and have worked their entire life, how dare they get some money a month? They should get no money a month. The widespread health problems associated among uh, SSDI applicants lead to very limited participation in the modern economy, as you might expect if you can't use your arms really well, your fingers might be really hard to type on a keypad, which everything uses now this table has a electronic device on it somewhere uh, about 73 percent of denied applicants have little to no earnings less than a hundred dollars a month the labor market success is even less common among people who are awarded ssdi further labor market success while still uncommon is more likely among younger SSDI applicants and beneficiaries. Yeah, because they might not, they might have just come out of the workforce and they're going back into something that's relatively similar versus people that worked in like the 80s. And anyway, so hence the need to take account of the older age as reflected. So basically, to summarize this article into a too long DR, hey, those old people that are on disability that are barely getting any money, they're getting it too well. We need to cut them off and put them back on the labor market during a pandemic. Kit? All right. Look. <sighs> How many times do I got to keep saying this? Medicare for all. UBI. Yeah. Student debt forgiveness. It's kind of getting insulting now that we have to. I, I, I got to keep on repeating myself. Other independent media networks keep repeating yourself. Um, but it's just, it's, it's just it, at this point, it's, it's got to come down to, to all of you watching. 
you're going to have to step up. Otherwise, here's today's show notes that I have. You can li- check them out in the description box below. You can check out all the links there. They're available for you guys. So here, we print out our show notes. They're in the description yeah. box below. Every, we're, so, we're so really quick, really quick. Because it's a good segue right back to our first story mm-hmm. where, you know, what's for brunch? Out of touch title and missing point. Where you're hearing a lady talk about her privilege yeah. and offers no solutions. Daniel. No, that's, I mean, sorry to cut you off. That was, that's a very good point. But it's, we got to keep doing stuff. We got We're going to keep talking about stuff. We're going to be doing everything we can. Sadly, because there is a pandemic, we are here and we can't go out. And I actually didn't realize until right before the show that uh, Convo Couch. Well, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Yeah. Right now they're recovering. But the fact that know, the, it but, just, yeah. we're all in terrible situations. We should be working together to make things better, not trying to pick apart money to give it back to corporations like we are currently doing, as we always do. The entire pandemic is being used as a wealth distribution device to take money from the people that have the least and give it to the people that have the most. The people that have the most are the same people that only had, remember when the pandemic started and we were laughing because we were like, ah, ha, ha, these giant corporations that told us all to be really good with our money and save even though apparently saving is bad only had like two weeks of money on hand if the economy got a little fluctuated and they didn't know what to do we're living in a time where every small business is being closed down at the same time we give out uh these these loans to people that oh look at that big businesses snatch up anyway gravity is a thing gravity does things Mm mm-hmm The big businesses are bigger planets than these smaller businesses, and we have decided that it is okay for as many of these smaller planets, these asteroids, these little specks of rock, to be sacrificed so that these bigger planets can be okay. It is disgusting. And the reality is that every time I hear someone say, but we live in a capitalist society, it'll work things out, we don't. We don't. That's a lie. That's a bold-faced lie, or it's just ignorance. Yeah. We live in a corporate socialist state. And a corporate Our money get out, goes yeah. to them. We feed them to keep them alive. They don't need to stand on their own two feet. They don't need to work for a living. We feed them. And the second that we run out of money, I'm not sure where they're going to get it from. Yeah. And the thing is, is that um, if we go down this pathway where everyone's in debt... What what kind of country is this then? What's the what, how are you gonna sell the American dream? What everyone's got to do a fun cool video on social media and the rare chance that they might hit the lottery and somehow get their house paid for and then they got a nice corporate deal. But again, what 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 money? What is it worse if everyone's broke? I mean, again, when Daniel did that story about uh, this one kid from what America's Got Talent, he won that thing and he paid off his student debt. And they're like, oh, look at that. That's a good boy. I mean, I mean, not everyone's going to win. Not everyone's going to win the lottery. Not everyone's going to win Hell's Kitchen. Not everyone's going to win American Idol. Not everyone's going to win America's Got Talent. No one's going to win all these things forever. You're, yeah, and, and let's say you do that fun, cool video on social media. Well, there's a good chance you're going to crash and burn and embarrass yourself, and you're going to go on epic fail there. That's yeah. what's going to happen. It's so nuts. The situation that we're in, because it's, again, go watch Rules for Rulers. It's on YouTube. It'll take 16 minutes of your time. Everyone that hasn't watched it never understands what I'm saying when I talk about keys. You need to watch it to understand. We have a problem where dictatorships are run by uh, large key operations, a small amount of large key operations, large, large keys that run everything, where democracy should ideally run in a widespread Short, a smaller key system. The problem is America continues to move towards a larger key system. That is what is destroying us because people with power, corporations, or I guess are people with power at this point in time, are able to buy everything that they want. Oh, they're, they're, they're out of money. Oh, they just you know, go to the government. And they need they to be bailed more. out. Same they need like to Hollywood. be bailed out because they are where mm-hmm. the power is centered in America right now. That is the issue. That is the only real issue that America is having. Every other issue that we're having is simply a byproduct of that issue. If Americans suddenly had the ability to talk to their Congress people in a way that corporations did, everything would change. Everything would basically get fixed for the most part. Mm-hmm. Not all, most part. The problem is that there's money in politics. The problem, and money in politics is even a side effect of this entire thing. The problem is power resides in corporations and not people. 
That is the problem that plagues America, Absolutely. and it is getting worse every single year. If, and we need to do everything that we can to change that. And I think that right now, at least what we're trying to do, and that's the big message of 99 Perspectives, which is sort of on pause because there's a pandemic, is take over city by city. We're trying to build a network of interconnected small keys that add up to a big key. We want to be in a position so that when we say we want to interview the mayor, she comes to us not because she wants, but because she has no choice. That is what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah, and I would appreciate when I call those politicians, they respond back with my phone calls and my emails. But real quick, and this is going to be unrelated to your story, but okay. somewhat, somewhat in a way. But notice how far behind we are and how little the people are saying in this country. Because I think everyone's afraid right now. But just a quick reminder. It's, and it's not related, but somewhat. There is massive protests and pushback happening in France. Mm -hmm. There is a massive they have protest. They a different key system. Wait, there, there's a massive protest happening against the monarchy in Thailand. There is a massive protest happening in India. The people of Argentina, their Senate, voted for a millionaire tax. What are we doing? Don't be that person who says they wish they could help. Now's the time to fight for that better future. Me and Daniel can be up here preaching and pointing out the inaccuracies of, of a privilege article or making fun of pundits. And look, we want to go right back out there doing investigative journals and so much more. There's a lot of stuff we want to do. But the thing is, at the end of the day, it's going to require all of us, even us here at Heartlands Media, all of us to step up and say enough is enough because we're getting screwed over and these corporations and these people in the top 1% are dancing and drinking because they believe the American people are weak. And here's a fact. You are not weak. They just convinced you that you are. You know your strengths. We deserve and are entitled to so much more.